point of order. Yeah, and it is perfectly legitimate to postpone consideration of the motion on the floor and everything that comes after it and has not yet uh, been uh, placed on the floor until after some other consideration, if town meeting so votes to do. The motion is to postpone consideration of Article 13 capital expenditures under Article 14 operating budget is complete. Uh, on your motion, Mrs. Jennings. Jenkins. Thank you. Pardon Through me. you, Mr. Moderator. I have been doing some research on capital budgets and their placement in the town warrants. Um, it's a difficult task at the library because we're missing quite a few copies. Since 1991, the capital budget has been placed after the operating budget for all except for two years in which in the lottery they were selected in the lottery first and were not postponed. Those years were 94 and 95 when things were a little more flush in this community. Moving the capital plan before the operating budget is a posturing move by the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee to circumvent town meeting members right to change operating budgets by using available funds to fund those budgets. If as town meeting members you choose to vote on Capital Article 13 first, then you will have little voice on Article 14 operating budget as almost all available funds will be depleted. I am not standing before you on behalf of any one group or for the changing of any one budget but for the democratic process that we all live in this town for. Town meeting members decide how much money and what money should be spent in any given area and the funding source, whether by raising appropriation, free cash, bonding, or using the stabilization fund. It is the responsibility of the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee to advise us and not decide for us. I urge you to support Pat, this postponement of this article until the operating budget is complete, leaving town meeting votes to the town meeting members. Thank you. Mr. Smith. <clears throat> I plead guilty. Um, <laughs> Um, I brought this to the board of attention, uh, to the attention of the board of selectmen, for one reason, and Mrs. Jenkins is absolutely right. It's a very rare year that we do do capital items ahead of the omnibus article. We did that for a specific reason, and it's exactly for the reasons that she stated. The limited uh, amount of free cash available is the, is the reason. At the beginning of this uh, budgeting season, we had five hundred sixteen thousand nine hundred thirty-eight dollars available for. Uh, added expenditures under the free cash um, area. And after we did our budgets, and we worked on them for over six months, um, we came up with a grand total at the end of this particular town meeting, if all our recommendations are followed, with $21,000, $22,000 in free cash. And we thought that was a very unstable position to be in. So we said, well, what is the most important of the issues? We've agreed with the school department in their allocations for their monies that they need. We've agreed with all other departments, including the police, fire, Department of Public Works, and everybody else, as to the availability of monies under, proper, under the guidelines of Proposition 2 and a half. After all those deliberations, we said maybe what we should do, rather than somebody get up here and, and, and amend their budgets after we get to town meeting, maybe we better put the capital expenditures ahead because there are really some pressing needs under the capital expense areas. In fact, if you look at the capital expense areas under some of the different uh, criteria, you'll see that some of the departments have even funded operational type budget items under the capital expense, and we allowed that. For instance, in the school department's budget, um, technology plan, $100,000, and uh, communications, $100,000, uh, I'm sorry, communications was $25,000, and to replace a van. Some of these items could have been under their operational budget, and we felt we would rather justify the, the use of the free cash and not attack their operating budget and allow it to remain in the capital expense. So 
we placed the capital expense items ahead of the, operate, uh, ahead of the operating budget to make sure that we could fund the necessary items and that the, the free cash situation would not be depleted after the omnibus article. So that's the reason for this. And I would strongly urge you, and I'm sure the Finance Committee will strongly urge you, not to take away from capital items that are very well needed and necessary items in this community. And if you look down those capital expenses, you'll see that they are very well needed. And if, in fact, you allow this amendment to go through, and somebody does get up here and, and amend their operational budgets, and one could do it, two could do it, three could do it, and we've depleted all our free cash. So um, we urge you very, very strongly to defeat this amendment. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Uh, Jervie. There has been a great deal of very difficult and very dedicated work done this year by the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, and the School Committee. We have taken a vote tonight, the School Committee, we will be recommending a budget to you of $14,718,549 for the schools. That is not the number that you find in the warrant. It is somewhat, it's less than what we had originally requested and more than what the Finance Committee had originally recommended. It is a number that has been reached by consensus with the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen. We would urge you to honor that consensus. It is your decision, but a lot of work has gone into building this consensus. A lot of attention has been paid to the long-term financial health of the community. Those of you who have been here in years past know that whenever I thought there was more money available, I've told you. I've stood up here and made the requests. If I were to tell you that there is more money available this year, well, I can't tell you that. I don't know that there is. We have, we have been very careful with the budgeting, and I would ask you, frankly, to hear what we've done, live with the fact that it isn't going to pay for everything people want but it will live within the community's means as we understand them to be. Now, as you listen to each individual capital item, you still have the responsibility of deciding whether you consider it to be a valuable expenditure for the town. But there is no need to take them out of sequence. Look at each one on its merits and support her or reject which ones you think are appropriate. But don't change this just because you think something has, there's been some sleight of hand. This, this represents the best judgment of all of the people who have been working so hard this year. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Burton. I had a senior moment there. I would like to say something about them, but I have them all the time, so we're even. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, for the benefit of those that have not had an opportunity to uh, study the uh, Warren articles and the, uh, some of the reports, the uh, free cash that we're starting with tonight, as was mentioned earlier, is listed here. The recommended program, and these numbers will change a little bit as we go through the evening. Uh, recommends that we spend over $440,000 as part of capital improvement. There will be some support required for the pump project later in the, in the evening or the next session. There's potentially a senior citizens drain on the uh, program, which we have supported and continue to support. Uh, there is a cultural council need this year, which we are recommending also. As you can see, we would end up with about $20,000. This number will change as we go through the next evening or two. I would strongly urge you to remember that free cash, when we play with that, that's the money that you had left over last year after you paid all of your bills, closed out your account at the end of the year. 
if we start using free cash for operating expenses, then we're saying we're going to guarantee next year that we have that quantity of money available at the end of the year after we have met all of our obligation. We're setting ourselves up for failure either the following year, subsequent year to that, or within the next five years. The Finance Committee has been wrestling very hard with a lot of the revenue issues. We're charged with protecting to the best of our ability, which uh, leaves a lot to be desired, I'm sure, but we're charged with trying to give recommendations that will see this town not just this year, but several years into the future. So we strongly urge you to support the budgets that are recommended this evening. And uh, I would start with saying, uh, let's take the order that the uh, Board of Selectmen has presented to us. Thank you. Mr. Reitmeyer, please state your name and address. George Reitmeyer, Mead Road. Move the question. Motion is to terminate debate on the motion to amend. Ms. Jennings, do you wish to ma make use of your two minutes? Yes, I do. I would like to, I would like to point out that um, I did not select any one group, and Mr. Smith pointed out that the school has three, three articles in the capital plan um, that should have been included in their budget, and I'm wondering, should pistols be, have included in the police department's budget? That's an option. Um, I also noted earlier this evening, $67,000 was mentioned that has been put aside in the pensions and benefits line item as we get to the operating budget. That figure is closer to $80,000 as their anticipated cost of 7.5% increase in the insurance line. Gee, I wonder if that should be projected to the 60-40% uh, that the school and the town have shared. I am, my postponement of this article is only to give you people the right to think about the funding sources that have been presented, and free cash is your money too. Some of the articles in this, bond, in this plan should be bonded. Should a gun last more than five years? Should an air conditioning improvement last more than five years? Should we even be renovating a men's locker room when we're building a new police station? Think about all of these articles and their funding sources, and anyone in this room can stand up and change a funding source. And I do urge you to postpone this for the reasons I've stated. On the motion to postpone, which requires a two-thirds vote, all those in favor of postponing, please raise your right hand, and would my tellers please go to work. Mr. Reitmeyer. 12. 12. Mr. Jones. 13. 13. Mr. Mosseri. 36. 36. All those opposed, please raise your right hand. Mr. Reitmeyer. 26. 26. Mr. Mosseri. 28. 28. 48. 48. Sorry. Mr. Jones. 50. 50. The motion is 61 in favor, 124 opposed. The motion fails to achieve the required two-thirds majority. The motion is lost. And we are back to the main motion under item A of article 13, which is, I move to appropriate the sum of $75,000 to be used with the appropriation under article 14 of the April 1998 town meeting for the purpose of replacing and equipping a fire pumper and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, be authorized to borrow the said sum. This requires a two-thirds vote. 